Hello, I'm Paul Larson. A northern New York columnist knows more about what to do to keep your family active in the Adirondacks than most people do who live in that region. The good news is she's sharing her first-hand knowledge with all of us in a series of four books about activities in the Adirondacks. She's dividing the books by geographical area. In this author visit, Diane Chase discusses the first book in the Adirondack Family Time series, Tri Lakes and High Peaks Regions. What makes you the ideal person to write a book about family activities in the Adirondacks? Well, uh, since 2003, I've been writing a newspaper, a weekly newspaper column uh, for the Adirondack Daily Enterprise. And uh, with that, and also my husband was, is an Adirondack guide, and he takes families and uh, young adults out into the Adirondacks. And we've been very fortunate, my young children and myself, to join those groups that go out into the Adirondack Park and, and explore. So uh, with the column, and I write for a, very, a variety of other sources, I, I think that's what makes me the perfect person to be able to write this book. Well, your book is very informative. It's called Adirondack Family Time, Tri Lakes and High Peaks Regions. So every activity in this book is appropriate for families? Absolutely. Uh, the book is, is good whether or not you have children, uh, if you're retired, uh, or if you just uh, you and your partner. So it's not just, it's not kids' time, it's Adirondack family time. Now what sets this book apart from other books about the Adirondacks? Well, there really is no other book out there that deals with a whole variety of family activities. There are a lot of really wonderful sources out there. Uh, there are kids' uh, hiking books, uh, high peaks guides. Uh, there's also a lot of historical reference about the Adirondacks. And I try to tie those sources together into one four season reference, which is this book. You mentioned the four seasons. A lot of people enjoy spending winter in the Adirondacks mm -hmm. for the sledding and the downhill skiing, but your book also mentions some other less commonly known activities. Well, um, in my book I have uh, about 33, I call them mini hikes. They're, they're hikes that can be actually at, you know accessed year round, but the, what makes a difference is that in the winter, I let you know, uh, the reader know, what hike can be snowshoed or cross-country skied as well. So uh, it really gives you and gives people the opportunity to go out into the woods, take a smaller, less strenuous hike, whether, again, you have small children or you just want to take a quick walk. But then in the winter, you can also snowshoe or cross-country ski it. So they can benefit from the beautiful views that people who are hiking along the trails would see in the spring and in the summer. Absolutely. Now, in the springtime, people often think about maple syrup and all the activities associated with that, but you also have some different activities for the springtime. Well, one thing that, that children can do is that they can go fishing any time, you know, during, they, they do not require any kind of fishing license. But in the Adirondacks, there are fish hatcheries where th they breed the fish, and it's free to go in and watch and see and learn what type of fish and where they're stocking these fish. And uh, you can actually feed the fish as well, so it's kind of fun. And you've been there with your kids, Absolutely. Obviously. You've done a lot of the activities in this book? Oh, we've done all the activities in this book. Oh, that's wonderful. How yeah. long did that take? Well, again, I started writing a newspaper column in 2003. I was familiar with the area, but I wasn't familiar with the area as a mother. And, uh, and again, my husband was taking out young adults and families out into the Adirondacks. And when my kids, had, when I was pregnant with my first, I couldn't go on a lot of those excursions. And I had to figure out what to do with myself. And I really couldn't find anything that could assist me in that. And that's where the book started coming into play. Like, what else, what, what else do I need to know to really learn about this area? Your book also has a whole section on towns, and it not only mentions the major things to do in the towns, but also the simple things like playgrounds and movie theaters. Why did you choose to include these things? Well, I, I just know for myself and uh, different people that I speak with, they're always asking where those things are located. And uh, another thing is ice cream. I mean, there's nothing better than to go to a playground and where can you get ice cream after? And um, uh, and again, I don't think that's something that particularly pertains to children, finding ice cream. It's great for all of us to be able to have a treat after a, a day of activity. Now, this book is not only for outdoor enthusiasts. It's for people who enjoy, for example, history. Yes. Um, where is a particularly historical place that you find interesting to visit? 
Well, I love the J-covered bridge, and uh, not only for historic reference, but also because there are other activities to do there as well. So it appeals to a whole range of, of people. You can bring small children there because there's a playground nearby. You can go swimming there, fish, uh, play tennis, but also, again, it appeals to that historian. And I, for one, love the performing arts. Mm -hmm. What do you recommend in terms of performing arts in the Adirondacks? Gosh, that's a tough one because there's a lot. I mean, we're really blessed with a lot of, of talent in this area. Um, but year-round, I would choose probably Pendragon Theater because they're the only year-round professional theater in the Adirondack Park. And they have professional uh, actors that come from all over, not only just local uh, theater talent, which they glean from as well, but sometimes from, from New York and other areas as well. And they offer uh, a huge benefit to the community having this kind of gem in the Adirondack Park. Well, for a summer venue, uh, the Lake Placid Sinfonetta they have these summer venues where you can go to the mid park in Lake Placid and hear an outdoor concert. And children, it gives children a f the freedom to be able to walk around and experience beautiful professional musicians in a real pleasant uh, atmosphere. But also, they have concerts inside in various uh, venues like the Lake Placid Center for the Arts. Uh, and children can, are free up until the age of 18. And they're really encouraging parents to bring their children to these concerts and experience professional music. And your book also makes the point that not every activity has to be super elaborate or super long. Oh, I, I hope I, thank you. Uh, yes, I, I think for me, I always felt that if I was going to go hiking, then it had to be a 46er because that's what I was hearing all the time and I didn't know a lot about the Adirondacks. And then I started to realize that there are so many beautiful walks and, and hikes within the Adirondack that, that are not the 46ers. And these are the hikes that I list, are, there are 33 of them. They're only a mile or less one way. And some are just wonderful nature walks. And some take 20 minutes. Some take less than that. And I think you can get the same of adrenaline rush of being out in nature in a shorter amount of time and we can accomplish those things like don't put them off just because it's going to take all day. You don't have to do something. You can go for a really nice walk and then go see the Sinfonetta at the park in that evening and, and f know that you had a wonderful day. Yeah, and you don't even have to plan a whole day around an activity either. Mm -hmm. You could squeeze it in between doing other things such as something like grocery shopping. Absolutely. And I've done that plenty of times. And, and yes, you can do that in a n variety of ways. Somebody going out for dinner in a restaurant and, and, uh, and you know, we always worry about how our children are going to act. Well, take them to John Brown Farm. Again, it's a historic site, but a beautiful place to walk around. And then, then go out to eat. Well, how is a book like this beneficial for families? I hope this book is beneficial to, to families to help them carve out some time, however they choose to spend it, whether it's with their children, um, on their own, with their grandchildren, however it is, I hope I made it easier for them to do that. Author Visits is a production of Mountain Lake PBS. For more information about the authors and their books, head to the Author Visits section of our website at mountainlake.org.